This video is brought to you by Soundcore. The Soundcore Space One Pro are here and they are bringing excellent performance and portability to the mid-range headphone market. I'm here to give you a rundown of all of their features. As always, I'll leave links to all the products mentioned in this video down in the video description. So let's jump straight into it. So first up, let's talk about that connectivity. So the Soundcore Space One Pro are featuring Bluetooth 5.3 with SBC, AAC, and LDAC as their connection codecs. So these headphones are gonna be compatible with both Android and iOS devices in my own testing. There's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone port on the ear cup for listening via the included aux cable in case you happen to run the battery down or if you prefer using a 3.5 millimeter connection. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth range, I managed to get right about 44 feet or 13.4 meters in my testing. That was using the AAC codec. So I was able to put three walls between the headphones and the phone before I started hearing any sort of dropouts. Now, if you tend to listen using the LDAC codec, your range and cover will be reduced noticeably, so that's something you wanna keep in mind. Additionally, the Space One Pro also offer multi-point connectivity for up to two devices. Now, I tested this by pairing them to a bunch of different devices, including my iPhone 15 Pro Max, Pixel 8 Pro, Asus Zenfone 9, and my iPad Pro, and multi-point worked exactly as expected. Now, if you're gonna use multi-point, you can't use LDAC. It's either gonna be able to do multi-point or LDAC, but not both at the same time. Now, moving over to watching videos and mobile gaming. So video latency is minimal when using the Space One Pro with Android or iOS devices. Now, mobile gaming is decent with these headphones as well, despite the fact that they are not really designed for gaming in mind. There is no low latency or gaming mode to be found with these headphones, so just something for you to remember. So now let's jump over to the build quality and the comfort. So right now, the Space One Pro, they are available in two colors. You can get them in jet black, or in cream white like I have here. Now the build quality on the Space One Pro is pretty much what we can expect from most headphones at the $200 price range. Now you get that lightweight plastic aluminum construction with a seamless sliding design for adjustment. The Space One Pro are also featuring Soundcore engineered FlexiCurve structure in their build. The headband uses a segmented structure to give it excellent flexibility. They also have three joints connecting the headband to the ear cups, allowing for rotation up to 180 degrees. So you can actually flip them either way to make it much easier to fold them up and to save space. Now, when it comes to comfort, the Space One Pro haven't caused me any head or neck fatigue so far. Now, despite being heavier than the Sony Altware by just a little bit, they are still very light coming in at 286 grams. There is some mild clamping force here, but it's not bad. And I have a huge head and I don't feel the, ne the need to stretch these, so they should be very comfortable for most people. Now, overall comfort has been very, very good in my experience so far. Now, grip is just okay with these headphones. They do tend to stay in place nicely on my walks, but when it comes to bending down or if you're gonna be doing any sort of like weightlifting on a bench, they did slip off my head a little bit, so that's something you're gonna wanna keep in mind. So if you're gonna be using these for that sort of stuff, like sports, weightlifting, workouts, and that sort of thing, you may wanna look elsewhere. Now, much like most other wireless headphones on the market, the ear pads here are not very breathable. They're using that, that you know, a faux leather type of a material. So they will get hot if you try to use these for sports or workouts. So now let's move over to the controls. So the Space One Pro use simple button controls. On the right side, you've got a button for play pause and for the voice assistant. And then you got a volume rocker that also doubles as track control with a long press in either direction. On the left ear cup, you've got a button for power on and off that also doubles as pairing with a long press. Now there's also an NC button that controls your active noise cancellation and your transparency mode. And this one can be modified in the app so that you can actually activate the bass boost feature if that's what you wanna do using a double press. Now the buttons are very tactile, they're very easy to locate and they're very responsive when needed. Now lastly, they also have a feature called Easy Chat that will lower the music and activate transparency mode quickly so you can conversate if somebody walks up to you and starts talking to you. Now this is activated by speaking. This feature works surprisingly well and is highly responsive, but if you're someone who likes to hum or sing along to your music, you might wanna leave this feature alone because it will definitely stop your vibe. Now, moving on from there, I'm gonna to touch on this really, really quick. The Space One Pro do get full app support from the Soundcore app. Now, this app is available for both iOS and Android users. Now, I won't be doing a full app walkthrough here because everybody always skips this section anyway, so I'm just gonna give you the TLDR. You get active noise cancellation and transparency controls, you get easy chat, speak to chat, you get your sound 
effects, which is your EQ for Dolby Audio, Hear ID, custom presets, custom EQ, all of that is in there. Customizable controls, save volume, firmware updates, etc., etc. So all that to say that you should download this app if you want to take full advantage of all the features that the Space One Pro have to offer. Do you need to get this app in order to use these headphones? Absolutely not. You definitely don't have to use it. But if you want to take full control, like I said, make sure you get this app. So now let's move into the actual performance of the Soundcore Space One Pro. So let's start with the battery life. So Soundcore is claiming up to 40 hours with noise cancellation turned on and 60 hours with noise cancellation turned off. So normally, you know, when it comes to most headphones, I would say that these are bold claims, but in my experience testing Soundcore headphones for years, I've come to realize that their headphones pretty much always deliver on those battery claims and these did not disappoint. So in my own testing, I'm gonna put the numbers here on the screen for you. So first up, we're gonna go with AAC, codec so I got 40 hours and 36 minutes with noise cancellation turned on and 61 hours and four minutes with noise cancellation turned off and then when it comes to the LDAC codec I managed to get 38 hours and 47 minutes with noise cancellation turned on and 52 hours and 22 minutes with noise cancellation turned off so overall excellent battery life numbers in my personal opinion. Now these headphones also charge via USB-C and feature an ultra fast charge option. So five minutes charging will give you an additional eight hours worth of playback time. So now let's move over to the transparency mode. So transparency mode here is good, but it's not the best I've heard at this price point. The custom transparency mode slider gives you five levels so that you can dial in how much or how little external sound you actually want to hear. So it's always good to see this level of adjustability. I usually keep mine set to level four, which gives me a good balance without letting in like too much noise in my, you know, at least for me personally. Now, overall, it does sound, I would say less processed than some of the lower end headphones, but it's still could use some work. The Space One Pro, they also feature uh, wind noise reduction for the transparency mode. It works okay in my opinion, but it still needs a bit of improvement, you know, because what it'll do is that it'll help reduce some of that wind noise when you're outdoors, but it also reduces the volume of the transparency mode at the same time. So it's, I don't know, it, it sort of almost defeats the meaning in that sense. So it's something I think that they still need to continue to work and improve on. And hopefully they hear this feedback and, you know, they, they try to make some improvements. Hopefully via firmware update, I don't know but I just wanted to make sure that that was known. So with that out of the way, that's gonna bring us over to the active noise cancellation. And the Space One Pro have upgraded their ANC noticeably here. So they did add two additional feed forward mics to help identify and block more noise. So you got six mics in total. They also upgraded the adaptive ANC. Now they're using adaptive ANC 3.0 is what they're calling it. And it makes real time calculations and adjusts to your wearing conditions. So definitely something a bit stronger, a little bit more advanced, and it is noticeable in how they actually perform in my testing. So this is something that I was very, very impressed by. In addition to that, adaptive, if you're not aware of what adaptive is, it's basically ANC that will adjust itself based on external noise. So you do get two ANC modes with the Space One Pro. You get adaptive, that'll adjust itself automatically, or you have custom where you have five levels of strength adjustment, level five being maximum. At level five, the ANC is surprisingly strong. This is a noticeable strength increase over the Space One and over the Space Q45. So they actually didn't prove it. And that's actually bringing these headphones into, you know, Bose and Sony territory worth of noise cancellation. This is actually very, very surprising. And I got to give Soundcore their kudos because they actually stepped their noise canceling game up here. That aside, I did notice a little bit of EQ shift here still with the noise cancellation mode. Now, mind you, there is less white noise when you're using ANC. Like if you have the music paused and you just have ANC on, it's actually very, very quiet. But when you're listening to music and you switch from normal to noise cancellation on, there is some additional mid bass being thrown in there. It's not terrible. If you like bass, it's really not a problem but I just wanted to make you aware of that. So that's gonna bring us over to the sound quality. So the Soundcore Space One Pro feature 40 millimeter triple composite dynamic drivers. They also feature LDAC codec for high res audio streaming when used with compatible Android devices. Now, all of my sound testing was performed using both Apple Music Lossless on AAC using my iPhone and Tidal High Res in LDAC on my Asus Zenfone 9, along with some locally stored albums in both FLAC and WAV formats. So when it comes to the tuning of the Space one Pro, this is exactly what I expected from Soundcore, which is their usual strong punchy bass with laid back treble. Honestly, 
I was actually expecting something different from Soundcore considering that this is their pro model, but alas, we're getting more of the same. I use the Hear ID feature to create a personalized EQ that's more suited to my own hearing. I then applied some tweaks to my Hear ID curve to bring the mids and the treble forward and reduce some of the bloatiness in the bass. For me, this was the best combination for a multitude of genres where heavy bass just isn't required. So if you're unfamiliar with Soundcore's Hear ID feature, it analyzes your hearing to create a unique personalized sound profile based on your ears. If you're unfamiliar with using EQ to tune headphones, then I strongly recommend using this feature to get the best sound possible with minimal fuss. Now this time around, Soundcore also added a Dolby Audio option. So this is kind of similar to Spatial Audio in the way that it adds depth and dimension to your music. Works well on some songs, but not on everything. So for like live recordings of like rock, jazz, that sort of stuff, it works really well, but less so with like hip hop or EDM, in my opinion. So now let's get into the bass. So the Space One Pro have a strong and punchy bass response. Good sub bass rumble here as well. And these are definitely bass head certified if you want them to be. So these are surprisingly versatile though because they do respond to EQ very well. So you can increase the bass or dial it back as needed for your personal taste. Like I actually dialed it back some to make the mid range be a little bit clearer. So that's how I did it. But the bass can definitely dig deep. If you like tracks like Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, Excellent. Or What We Doing by La Russell, Pilo, and Richie Rich. Shout out to my Bay Area artists. Those are two songs you definitely want to check out with these headphones. Now moving over to the mid-range. Out of the box, as I mentioned before, the mid-range takes a back seat due to the bass being so forward in the mix. In the EQ, I dialed the bass back a little bit and lifted the mids to bring them forward. This made a huge improvement for my own personal taste. Good vocal performance was to be had now with both male and female voices. And it still had that rich warmth in the sound that we expect from Soundcore, but now, the but now the bass isn't just running over the mids completely. It's a good experience with music featuring live instrumentation. For example, listening to Can't Keep My Cool by Duran Jones and the Indications is a must if you want to hear what I'm hearing. And now, if you never heard of this band, give them a try and thank me later. Now let's move over to the treble. So treble starts off bland in my opinion, but definitely comes to life with those EQ adjustments. So the changes that I made in the EQ give the treble a substantial boost and the Space One Pro have a much more clear sound with solid instrument separation. The treble can get bright with classical and mariachi music with loud horns and strings, but still rolls off early enough to not be offensive or sibilant or harsh. So listening to, to um, Lately by Stevie Wonder can help you hear exactly what I'm talking about. Such a powerful voice when combined with his piano is some next level shit that never fails to bring tears to my eyes. But more credit to the song lyrics and Steve's performance here, not the headphones. So I'm not trying to say, oh my God, these headphones are so amazing that they brought tears to my eyes. That's not what I'm saying here. <laughs> just, I just want to make that clear. It's a song that has a special meaning for me deeply. So links to all the songs that I mentioned here will be in the video description if you're interested in checking those out. Now, when it comes to listening to these headphones via the 3.5 millimeter aux cable. So the Space One Pro, when you plug in the aux cable, they will power themselves down. So there won't be any DSP, there won't be any EQ available. It's gonna be 100% driver tuning. Overall, it's acceptable. Like you can listen to music, you can watch videos, stuff like that, but it's not really enjoyable for me personally. If you do like an A-B test, like listen to them wired and then listen to them wireless with your EQ applied, night and day difference. So <laughs> huge, huge difference. So if you run the battery down, it's a good, you know, it's good to have this option to be able to plug them in and use them via aux. But overall, it's it's not really my cup of tea personally. I still, like I said, I like that the option is here, but you know, it just it, it, it just isn't very good for musical listening. When it comes to giving Soundcore some constructive criticism on these headphones, we got some stuff to talk about. So first things first, same sound as the previous models. So I had hoped that because these are the quote unquote pro model, especially at this price point of 199, I would have hoped that we would have had improved tuning, but the sound is more like the Space One at $99. In my opinion, the, the Space Q45 actually sound better out of the box than the Space One Pro. So that's one of the things where I'm just like, what's going on here? So I would have hoped we would have had, you know, an improvement in audio quality. And it just feels like they kind of copy pasted the tuning to this one. Not saying that's what happened, but I just had higher expectations at some for something from Soundcore at this price point, especially if we're going to call it Pro. Secondly, the call quality. This leaves a bit to be desired. So during my testing, people that I called complained that they were having a hard time actually hearing me, which really threw me off because 
I, you know, with the, with the space Q45, the mics were actually surprisingly good. So I don't know if it's overly aggressive on the background noise cancellation or what's going on, but maybe a firmware update is needed. And, um, just wanted to throw that out there, but I'm going to share some microphone samples after this. So stay tuned for that. Thirdly, the fact that there is no hard case in the box, all they came with was the two cables, the aux cable, the charging cable, and a carry pouch. That's it at $199. Come on, son. Come on, son. If they can include cases for their lower end models, how do we not have a case for their pro model? Right now, to be clear, you can't, Soundcore does sell a case. I think it costs like 20 or 30 bucks. I'll leave a link to that in the description for anybody who's interested, but you shouldn't have to buy that separately. Like, are you serious right now? This is your pro model, man. Like what is going on here? If we can include a case with your lower end models, how can we not include a case with the pro model? I mean, really? <laughs> This is something that should have been, this is a no brainer. It should have been something that was thrown in there. And then lastly, the lack of a wear detection sensor. Now this isn't really kind of nitpicky, but just again, the fact that this is included on lower end models, but not included on their high end pro model. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. So I'm just, just, I want to point this out because I'm like, what, what is happening here? If we're going to call something a pro model, if we're going to call something a flagship model, it should have everything, right? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like it should have everything. That's just my opinion. Now, if you have any questions in regards to the uh, Soundcore uh, Space One Pro, please feel free to ask them in the comment section and I'll be getting back to you as soon as possible. So now let's get into some microphone quality samples to see how these headphones actually perform in both quiet and noisy environments. So we'll see how these all perform. So here we have the microphone test for the Soundcore Space One Pro. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, so here we have the microphone sample for the Soundcore Space Q45. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, and here we have the microphone sample for the Beats Solo 4. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the microphone sample for the Sony Altware. So testing, testing, one, two, three. As you can see, once again, I'm indoors in a semi-quiet room. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the Soundcore Space One Pro in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or something along those lines. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the Soundcore Space Q45 in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or something along those lines. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the microphone sample for the Beats Solo 4 in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or something along those lines. So testing, testing, one, two, three. And here we have the Sony Altware in a simulated crowd noise environment. So something like a busy bar, a crowded restaurant, or something along those lines. So testing, testing, one, two, three. So with that out of the way, for full disclosure, this video was sponsored by Soundcore, as I said at the beginning of this video. Now, despite this, they received no rights for copy or script approval and were not allowed to see this video prior to it being published. They're watching this video at the same time that you are. And I'm telling you this because I believe in transparency and honesty with you as the viewer. There will undoubtedly be other sponsored videos on these headphones, but not everyone is willing to disclose that as openly as I am. As always, please be sure to watch multiple reviews before making that final purchase decision. I'm pretty sure you can have videos out there from Floss, CEO in the making, my guy Gameski, DHRME. Make sure you check out all of those videos before you make that final decision. Now, if you are interested in seeing which Soundcore earbuds are my best, are best in my opinion, check out the video that I'll leave for you right up here on the screen. With that said, my name is Hefe and I'm out.